Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, welcome back again to our next lecture. This is just a continuity of my previous lecture. So, where I had, uh, I had just introduced the second order Taylor expansion. Now, it is the second order Taylor expansion of the function f x i j, which is the neighbor of x o. So, we just uh, do the around f x o up to second order, so which is given like this. So, f of x i j is f of x o plus the difference between neighbor and the center, this uh, the, the point where we are looking for times the uh, derivative plus this square times second derivative plus the error term. So, if you want even further accuracy, you go to third order, then you have the 1 by 6, this is power 3, times the third order derivative, you can go even fourth order, but your computational cost will be larger and larger. And now we have again assumed that suppose so because the, the interpolated point is somewhere nearby the grid points, so we assume that we just have the approximation of this f of x0 into its nearest value, so which is nearest means, so x mean is the nearest uh, point from the x o such that our error is uh, almost 0. So, this is our assumption. So, once we do the assumption, this put, we put this assumption here in this equation. Now, I call this equation as the first equation as 12.1. Uh, and now, after in 12.1, when we put this assumption, we get f of x i j is approximately of f x mean plus this part, same as before, where j is running from 1 to m. And then I, since this value is known and this value is known, therefore I bring this on the left hand side and just I write this part here. So use the notation that, so bj is equal to this difference between the, the neighboring function value and the minimum function value. And dxj is xij minus xo, this is the distance between neighbor and to the center. And f a, the first order derivative I define as a1, and second order derivative I define as a2, and the ej, e of xij I define as ej. So now I put this in the, this notation into this equation, so I get this part is equal to bj, plus this part is dxj times derivative a1 plus half of this part is dxj square times of derivative a2 plus ej. So, j runs from 1 to m. So, I note, note, denote this equation as equation 12.2. Yeah, this is our equation. Now, what we see that we Again, so we have now unknown a1 and a2, two unknowns, but we have m equation. So, if we have less than one neighbor, or there is only one neighbor, then we have underdetermined system, we cannot solve it. But we have taken the radius of neighbor large so that we always get enough number of neighbor, for example, in the beginning, I have described h is equal to 3 times delta x. So, at least on the boundary, we get 3 points. So, on the boundary, we have 3 equations and 2 unknown. But if you are in the center, so somewhere it is lying on the center, on the left, you may have 3, and on the right, 3. So, you have 6 equations, but 2 unknown. So, it is overdetermined system. So, in this case, we have
two unknowns and m where m is greater than two so implies we have again overdetermined system of equations. So we solve this with this system with the least square minimization. So what does it mean? This implies minimize the functional. Now our functional is now is a function of a1 and a2 because we have two unknowns is sum over j is equal to 1 to m w of j is a square again what we get it is a sum j is equal to 1 to m w j so our e j from 12.2 we get b j minus d x j a1 minus half d x j square a2 whole square so minimization means so derivative of this is equal to zero. But now we have two variables. So before in linear case we have only one variable, but now we have two variables. So it means del f a one a two by del a one is equal to 0 and del f a1 a2 by del a2 also 0. So both the partial derivative with respect to a1 also must be 0, partial derivative with respect to a2 also must be equal to 0. So now let us do that. So first del f a1 a2 by del a1 is 0 is equal to we put it 0 on the right hand side so this is nothing else del by del a1 of that summation summation of j is equal to 1 to m wj bj minus dxj into a1 minus half dxj square into a2 whole square yeah so what we get here so we apply the chain rule so first so the summation is independent of a1 i can take the summation out to m. Now wj is also independent of a1 that we can take it out. Now you apply the derivative of this with respect to a1. Now you apply the chain rule. First take the derivative of bj minus dxj into a1 minus half dxj square into a2 with respect to the square with respect to this component and then derivative of vj minus dx a1 minus half dx a square a2 with respect to a1. So with the chain rule what we get? So derivative of this inside the bracket with itself is 2 because it is square 2 times bj minus dx a1 minus half 
डी एक्स जे स्क्वायर ए टू नाउ डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस इन साइड ब्राकेट विद रेस्पेक्ट ए वन सो डेरिवेटिव ऑफ बी जे विद रेस्पेक्ट ए वन जीरो डेरिवेटिव ऑफ डी एक्स जे टाइम्स ए वन विद रेस्पेक्ट ए वन इज माइनस डी एक्स जे एंड डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस विद रेस्पेक्ट टू ए वन इज ऑल्सो जीरो बिकॉज डी एक्स जे इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ ए वन एंड ए टू इज ऑल्सो इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ ए वन देर फोर दिस पार्ट वी गेट ओनली दिस वन सो इफ डेल एफ ए वन ए टू बाई डेल ए वन इज इक्वल टू जीरो इम्प्लाइज वी गेट दिस पार्ट इज इक्वल टू जीरो इट मीन्स टू वी कैन टेक इट टू द अदर साइड देन वाट वी गेट दैट सम ऑफ जे इज इक्वल टू वन टू एम डब्ल्यू जे नाउ बी जे सो वी कैन टेक माइनस टू ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड इट मीन्स इज ऑलरेडी जीरो सो वी कैन हैव सेम सिम्बोल यर बी जे टाइम्स नाउ इट इज डी एक्स जे माइनस डी एक्स जे स्क्वायर ए वन माइनस हाफ डी एक्स जे स्क्वायर ऑफ ए टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो आई जस्ट राइट इट आई दी क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेल्व पॉइंट टू सो आई ट्वेल्व पॉइंट थ्री सो नाउ सिमिलरली वी अप्लाई the partial derivative of this with respect to a2 similarly del f a1 a2 by del a2 is equal to del of del a2 summation of j is equal to 1 to m wj bj माइनस डी एक्स जे ए वन माइनस हाफ डी एक्स जे स्क्वायर ए टू ऑफ होली स्क्वायर एंड नाउ अगेन आई कैन दिस कॉमेशन आई डब्ल्यू जे आई कैन टेक इट आउट नाउ आई अप्लाई द पार्सल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस इन साइड इज ब्राकेट विद रेस्पेक्ट ए टू Again, using the chain rule, first what do we get? Two because of the square times this argument here, b j minus d x j a one minus half d x j square of a two times the partial derivative of this in with respect to a two. Again, b j with respect to a two partial derivative zero. dxj times a1 with respect to a2 again zero and is the minus half dxj square and derivative of a2 with respect to a2 is 1 so we get this part so what do we get here we can say this half to cancel The minus summation of j is equal to one to m w j b j minus d x j into a one minus half d x j square into. Now I can write. We can put it everything inside. So what we get now? B j times d x j square minus d x j. Power three minus half d x j power four. So if del f a one a two by del a two is equal to zero implies what do we get? This is zero means this minus. We put it on the right hand side. We get summation of j is equal to one to m w j. b j d x j square minus d x j time uh so here i have forgotten should be a1 
minus that should be a2 yeah so dxa square dxa cube into a1 minus half aj power 4 into a2 is equal to 0. So I just write this as a equation number 12.4. And now putting this equation 12.1, now what do we get? We get now finally two equations. One is 12.3, one is 12.4. So we got two equations, two unknown. So now we can solve the our linear system. So we write, we rewrite. equations 12.3 and 12.4 in the matrix form. So what I can write? So since I have this one I put on the left hand side and this part I put on the right hand side. So from the first equation 12.3, on the left hand side what I get? I get 2 by 2 matrix. So how it looks like? The, my unknown vector is A1, A2. Because if I put this on the other side, it's a, zero, a positive. So I have everywhere positive on left side and right side. So the first component of A1, in this one is dx square. So here is the summation now. If you put this summation inside the bracket, we have summation everywhere. And here also, if I put a summation inside the bracket, here is summation, here is summation, and here is summation. Therefore, the component of A1 is there, is a summation of, uh, let me write a little bit larger. So the first component is summation of wj dxj square. So my vector is a1 and a2 now. I have also two on the right hand side. So the first component is summation of wj dxj square and the component of a2 is summation of wj half dx a square. So here half summation of wj dx a square. And now from this part, sorry here, it is dx a square times dx a, it should be dx cube. Yeah, there was a small mistake. So here it should be dx cube. And now again, the summation of this is now the same sum of wj dx j cube. So what we have here that uh, let me just put it, let here I had can see here. So now I keep it half. Let me put it this thing here, put it on the left hand side. And I just multiply everywhere with this half here. 1 by 2, now it doesn't matter. So, 1 by 2 and 1 by 4 because I should get symmetric matrix here. So, therefore, I am just keeping this half. So, this is 1 by 4. And then here it is again half, half, 1 by 4. And now I just write this. Part so the a1 component of a1 is here is a half half of w of j dx a cube and the component of a2 is here summation so is a one fourth summation of w j dx j to the power four and now it is on the right hand side the first right hand side is this one. Summation of wj dxj times bj, and the right hand side of this one is 
is half summation of wj dxj square times bj. So I denote it as the 12.5. So now what we get is that we get a symmetric matrix, two by two system, two unknown a1 and a2, and so if this is not singular, we can do the inverse, and then we get a1 and a2. In this 2 by 2 matrix, you can directly in analytically invert up to 3 by 3 matrix, you can invert. So we get a1 and a2. Once we know a1 and a2, and same as in the linear approximation, if we know a1 and a2, so 12.5 can be solved if the left hand side matrix is not singular. So it means that again, if all points are lying on the same x o, then we have all dx is 0, then we get the singularity that will not be the case. So then we get a 1 is equal to, so inverse of that matrix times sum of wj dxj bj half of sum of wj dxj bj. So or our a1 is we have to find, so this implies we get from our original equation that once you we know the a1 and we know also a1 and a2 so we get a1 and a2 so once we know a1 and a2 after we plug a1 and a2 in our original equation 12.2 we get so 12.2 is then we get f of x minimum is f of x o plus x of minimum minus x o then this is a1 is our f of x so this is nothing else a1 is f of x, a2 is f of xx. So we put it here plus half of x min minus xo fxx. So this is square. So, but we are looking for f of xo. This implies our f of xo is equal to or is approximately f of x min minus x min minus x o f of x minus half of x min minus x o square f x x. So this we get our interpolation formula. So now what you remember that if so initially we have assumed that f of x o approximate f of x mean. So that was a little bit mistake. And now here we are correcting that mistake here. So it is just like the, the second term is the correction. Now let us see that in the same way as which we have derived in the first order, the 12.5 we can get in other way. So instead of doing all this partial derivative with this one, we can do, since uh, we have already derived that, uh, so we have our, we have Ej is equal to Bj minus Dxj, A1 minus half Dxj square, A2. 
So this I can write into the vector matrix form here, Em B1 up to Bm minus, so I can write this again A1, A2, here Dx1, Dxm, half Dx1 is square, dxm square half. So, this is nothing in the vector form. B minus, so I define this as m a. So, f is summation of wj, ej square is equal to, now we can write into the e transpose w times E, so W is our diagonal matrix M I G 4, W M, so F of function of A, so minimization with respect to its variable a means del f y del a is equal to 0, this implies, so I have already derived in the uh, linear case that this get explicitly a is equal to m transpose w m inverse times m transpose w of m uh, of b. Yeah, so this is 12 point suppose 6. Now it should be 12.5 and 12.6 should be equivalent. So in order to check that, like earlier case, we have our m we just take our m transpose is dx1 up to dxm, yeah? So our m transpose is dx1 up to dxm half dx1 square half dxm square. So if you multiply m transpose diagonal matrix times m, then you get exactly this z like a square, yeah? So you get this matrix, which is m transpose w m. If you put on the right hand side, which is the inverse here, I had written, I have already that uh, removed. And now m transpose w b should be exactly this part. So you multiply this m transpose this mod m with the diagonal matrix times the vector b, then you get exactly this right hand side part. So it means that we can, once we know the geometry, this is called this m. So here m is called a geometric matrix. So, geometric matrix means it involves only the distance between point where you are looking for and to its neighbor. Therefore, we call it as a geometric matrix. So, in order to have the solution, it should be non-singular and then we get the unique solution. So, I will stop this part today. So, next I will come to the another approach which is basically the original idea of moving least square method. Okay, thank you.